they say the best kind of magic is that which happens in the spectator's hands. This trick is so simple, yet so powerful, it fooled one of the smartest men ever. His name, Steve Jobs. The magician has two decks of cards. There's nothing strange about them and he displays both decks in brand new order. The magician allows the spectator to choose a deck for himself and choose a deck for the magician to use. In this case, the spectator gives the magician the red deck and takes the blue deck for himself. The magician then says he wants the spectator to copy his moves exactly and if they do, maybe they'll have the exact same outcome. The magician picks up his cards and tries to cut them exactly halfway down. He tells the spectator to pick up his cards, the blue pile, and also try and cut them exactly halfway down. The magician then gives his cards an overhand shuffle, genuinely mixing up the order of all the cards in his hand. The spectator then picks up his pile and tries to copy the magician exactly by performing an overhand shuffle with the cards. The magician then cuts his red cards again and the spectator follows, cutting their blue cards. The magician then takes his cards and gives them a riffle shuffle, mixing up his cards even more. The spectator sees this and again picks up their pack and also tries to give the cards a riffle shuffle, mixing up all the cards as well. The magician then gives the cards one final cut and so does the spectator. The magician then instructs the spectator to swap piles with him. Both the magician and the spectator switch piles. The magician then picks up the spectator's pile and attempts to cut off exactly half the deck. He then looks at the next card down and remembers it. He places that card onto the deck and then places the rest of the cards onto the pile. The spectator is instructed to do exactly the same thing. They pick up the cards in one hand like the magician did and then try and cut off exactly half the cards. They then look at the next card down and remember it. That card is then put on top of the pile and the rest of the cards are then put on top of that. In exactly the same way as before, the cards are mixed. The magician cuts the cards and then the spectator cuts the cards, losing their selection into the deck and then the magician and spectator swap piles. The magician and spectator then have to find the cards they cut to. The magician goes through his deck and finds his card. The spectator then goes through and picks up his deck and finds the card that he cut to. Both cards are then placed onto the table. Despite the cards being fairly shuffled by both the spectator and the magician, despite the deck being cut numerous times, despite the fact that a card was randomly selected, it just so happens that the two cards that they chose perfectly match. Take two decks of cards and arrange them in new deck order. This trick is self-working and requires no setup at all. However, it's vital that you explain to your spectator that they should try and copy your moves exactly. Try and cut the cards in half and the spectator should try and do the same thing. Shuffle your cards together and let the spectator copy you as seen in the performance. It doesn't matter how much you try and cut and shuffle the cards, just really emphasise the point as you do it that the spectator should try and copy your moves exactly, as this will be vital later on in the trick. The secret to this effect is when you switch piles. As you give your pile to the spectator, look at the bottom card. This is very easy to do as the spectator will not be expecting or looking out for you to look at the bottom card. You can do this by simply picking up the cards and glancing at the bottom. However, you can even just turn the cards over and act as if you're squaring them up, or rotate the cards around and see what the bottom card is. In this case, it's the Jack of Spades. 
Once the spectator gives you their pile, pick it up and hold it in your hand. Cut off half the cards and look at the next card down. In this case, it's the nine of diamonds. Pretend to remember the card and place it on the rest of the pile so that you instruct your spectator to do exactly the same as you. The spectator will cut off half the cards and place them onto the table and then look at the next card. In this case, it's the ten of diamonds. However, when they place the rest of the cards onto this card, you know that their bottom card, which in this case is the jack of spades, will be on top of their card. Therefore, later on when you go through the deck, you know that their selection will be next to the jack of spades. Keep cutting the cards as much as you like after you've done this. Now swap piles again and say that you're going to look for the card that you cut to. Go through the deck and find the key card. In this case, it's the jack of spades. The card on top of this is the spectator's card. Place that down as your selection. The spectator will then go through the deck and also find the ten of diamonds too. You can then turn them both over to reveal that you have the same card.